Three, two, one, and we're live. Chuck and Pat Vosberg. Hey guys, how are you tonight? Yeah. We decided to do a Facebook Live. Yeah, we're doing a little Facebook Live. We, we've got some important things we want to talk about. Yeah, we got some important stuff we want to say. Yeah, we've got a thing or two to say. <laughs> and, and we're hoping that somebody's going to listen. <laughs> So yeah, we want to say a few things. Well, I'll tell you what we wanted to talk about is, uh, you know, Pat and I work together full time. You know, if you if you know us, you know we're full time realtors, and we work together. We literally do everything together. We're together all day, every day, all night, every night, <laughs> and it it works for us. We we really, and people don't believe me when I say this, but we've never had an actual fight. Now we have had disagreements. I will say that, and we do annoy each other from time to time. That kind of stuff's to be expected, <laughs> but but we haven't had an actual fight. No. So we've we've got a lot of this stuff kind of figured out how to coexist together, and we were thinking that you know a lot of folks all of a sudden with the quarantine thrown together as a couple and all of a sudden have to spend way too much time together that, that we're not used to doing. And, and that presents some problems. And we, uh, we noticed that, you know, a lot of our friends are letting a temporary situation cause what can be permanent damage to their relationships. So we decided that we would uh, talk about that a little bit this evening and just, you know, kind of share our thoughts and the techniques that we use to be able to work together and spend all of our time together without having a lot of conflicts. So you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah. So, you know, you have to kind of ask yourself some questions like going through it, like why did you marry each other? That's a good question. And uh, why did you agree to get married to each other? You know, there's things that there, you know, and think about, you know, when you're going through this, what are the good points in your relationship? Don't think about the, he's getting on my nerves, she's getting on my nerves, uh, that kind of a thing. You know, why, you know what's happening here today? You know, I, I need space. Uh, everyone needs space. But you know what I'm saying? Like, they're getting on my nerves. Um, it's just where minor annoyances can escalate to a point where they shouldn't. Yeah, and that, that's a real hazard because, yeah. you know, these little annoyances, since you're together so much, they can escalate pretty quickly. Yeah. And and you just have to learn to stop yourself. And I, I know, like for me, you know, and I'm, I'm sure I annoy, well, I'm not sure. I know for a fact <laughs> that I annoy Pat sometimes. And, and she annoys me sometimes. But I have to keep in mind, like, okay, well, you know who is she to me yeah and you know if i'm if i'm being critical of her i'm being critical of myself because i picked her and you know she's my partner i chose her and um, it also kind of comes around to are you going to give that person the benefit of the doubt like you know when pat does something that annoys me i have to ask myself well what's her intent is she doing this you know for some malicious reason or is she doing it because she wants to help or because she she thinks it's going to be beneficial and you have to take somebody's their their motive into account because i know i just and it's hard when you're annoyed but i just have to remember that when i'm getting annoyed pat is doing whatever she's doing from a place of helping or trying to do something beneficial she's not trying to annoy me yeah and the same thing with chuck you know when he is doing something that i think is going to be annoying as well you know it is coming from a place of actually from love and you have to like think about that in your relationship that okay where is this person coming from so any kind of situation that you're in you have to go back and take a step back and say okay why did that person do that and just kind of analyze the situation and think about why the why of what is going on and think about, well, yeah, that's my partner in life. And I know that they would not do that to harm me in any way. 
You know, that brings up an interesting point though, Pat. What about the times where, like, I'll just use myself as an example, where, you know, I'm I'm not really thinking, you know, I'm not doing it for good reasons. I'm just messing up, you know, I'm falling short. I'm just, you know, I'm not at my best. And, you know, what, what about those kind of situations? How, how do you manage those? Well, we have to, you know, stick up for each other and we have to just kind of help each other out all the time. We have to like think of the other person more than ourselves. Yeah. Like the, the other day I was kind of having a bad day. I was, you know, I was just kind of feeling the pressure, you know, this quarantine, it's, yeah. you know, it's just dragging on and it, you know, it's just, I, you know, I think it's got everybody on edge and I, I was just having one of those days and Pat realized that because, well, fortunately I was communicative enough to tell her that I, <laughs> I told her, I was like, man, I'm, you know, I'm really feeling the pressure today. I, yeah. I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm having a lot of negative thoughts. I'm not, not feeling good about things. And so she did what she could do to help me and not like trying to talk me out of it because that doesn't work. Pat knows that. And uh, I know better than to try and talk her out of feelings too. That, that just never works. But yeah, you know, it doesn't you, work if you do it that way. Your partner's not always going to show up at their best. And, and sometimes they're just going to mess up. And I know, uh, we've talked about this a lot amongst ourselves that, and this partly comes from our beliefs too, is that Pat expects me to mess up. And, and I don't mean that to be funny. <laughs> I mean it that, you know, I'm, I'm just a standard human being. I make mistakes. I screw up. I make dumb decisions. It, it happens on a regular basis. It's to be expected. So when I do do something stupid, Pat's not shocked that it, and, and again, I'm not trying to be funny, but it, it's not shocking. It's like, oh, okay, well, you did something stupid. Now, what are we going to do now? Right. And it works both ways, of course. Now, so naturally, I don't yeah. try, you know, I tr don't use that as an excuse to just be stupid <laughs> because, you know, when, when somebody gives you that kind of liberty, it make it actually makes you better, which kind of defies logic in a way because, you know, if someone says, I, I'm just going to let you do whatever you do. I, I'm giving you free reign. There's, I'm not going to yell at you. It actually makes you better. It does. Um, the other thing is that you have to kind of understand uh, everyone's has a different level of worry mm. and kind of um, what their fear is too. Like their, their level of fear and worry might be different than uh, yours. Like mine is different than yours and yours is different than mine. Um, yeah, we worry about different we things. We worry about different things. And, and also we show worry differently. That's true. Like like for you, you know, if you're worried about something, it's, you know, it, it's, that's true. it's obvious <laughs> that you're worried. <laughs> that's true. Whereas like with me, it's not obvious all the time. No, you're a little more reserved. And, and that's me. something I'm trying to improve on. I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm from Florida. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> ah! But yeah. it's, it's something that, that we have to be kind of aware of with each other is that we worry differently. And like, and you can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of people, like they'll see me and it'll look like I'm not concerned and they'll mistake that for not caring. So Shay Jeffers says, just passing through, hey, hey, you did something stupid. <laughs> We're always doing something silly and oh, stupid. Well, fill me in, brother. <laughs> no, I, yeah, we I, did something stupid. <laughs> I did something stupid and you didn't point it out? No, you what? said in the thing that you did something stupid. Oh man, I yeah. do. Yeah, you know, we're always doing something silly oh, or- Regular basis? You know, just whatever. You know, it's it just, just happens. It it's, just happens. You know, things happen and you're not going to be like nitpicking. And uh, like I said, you, you don't want to get on each other's nerves all the time. And especially in this quarantine we're, that we're having. I mean, we're oh, together. I another thing to add to that, too. Yeah. It's like, you know, I may be a dumbass, but I'm your dumbass. <laughs> you, know? you picked me. There you go. So. So it's on you partly. The other thing now, we both work together. We're full-time realtors. This is what we do together. 
And so we both, it's not like one of us had a loss of income. Like I didn't, I used to be a social worker. So let's say I was a social worker in a hospital still, and now I've lost my job. Well, with a guy or a girl, it could be even too, there could be a loss of income from that job. And there could be a loss of identity with that job. Now, I don't want to, mm. you know, be so sexist here, but a lot of men have a lot of identity with their jobs and their positions. Are and you trying to imply that men and women have differences, that we're not exactly the same? <laughs> we're not the same. And that's just we're my not. opinion. But so, it's a fact. It's a fact. No, but men do identify with their jobs a little different than women do. So I think that, you know, especially right now, if if you if you're in a um, husband and wife situation where a man has lost his job, well, now he's not only lost his income for his family, he's also lost his uh, sense of identity in his self and his mm -hmm. self worth. And there's a, there's so much going on behind the scenes for a man that he might not even talk to you about. Yeah, because I think there's deep so down, much. Oh, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to no, talk over you, but you know, I, I think deep down, all men understand that kind of you know their role in our culture is to provide for the family, and if you're yeah. falling short on that, that's that's not good. Right. And also on top of that, I think men inherently know that women need security. That's just one of the differences. Uh, you know, it's like a whole nother topic, but you know, men primarily, they need respect from their partner, whereas women need safety and security. Yeah. And I, I think those are just little primary needs. Don't you, I do. you agree with I that? I totally agree with that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You, I know you do. Yeah, you know, we've it. talked about that a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I think the the basic psychological needs of men and women are different, and so that it to to go and you know if you see something with your man who has lost a job um, or the woman too, but mm -hmm. you know, kind of be mindful of that. It's just not the job that's lost, but there's a lot more to it that has been lost and um, to be an encourager about it and to, you know, know how to handle that a little differently. Yeah. I think our culture has kind of changed where women also feel a lot of responsibility for supporting the family. Absolutely. And you know, that's, that's kind of a relatively, I mean, in the, in the scope of history, that's a relatively new thing that that's been put on women on top of everything else, you know, with all the traditional roles mm -hmm. to actually have that additional stress yeah. of feeling responsible for that. Mm -hmm. Whereas back in the old days, the man was responsible for that and the woman was responsible for other things. Right. But it, it's totally different now. So uh, everyone has a lot of responsibilities and to know how to help your partner right now is extremely important and to be aware uh, mm -hmm. to, to be very, very aware of how you can help your partner right now is extremely important. Yeah. Uh, I really do think so. Just got to be patient. Yeah. And, and I got to tell you, it, it just seems to me that the, the biggest root of conflict in a relationship is pride. And a lot of people disagree with me on, on that on the surface, but let me explain the whole issue with pride is that I don't deserve to be treated that way. And, you know, anything that starts with I, especially those, you know, I should or I don't or whatever, <laughs> you know, those, that's pride. And um, I, I don't deserve anything. You know, it, it is what it is. You get what you get out of life and you can't control it. And it, it's unfortunate. Life's not fair sometimes. Right. Uh, you know, everybody, I think no matter who you are, you're having some negative effects from this whole quarantine. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you know, we're lucky. We've, you know, we've got a good business with, that's really established and, you know, it's, we're not going to starve to death, but, but even us, you know, we're like, Oh man, you know, our cash flow is looking a lot different this month than it did last month. Right. Exactly. You know, how long is this going to last? Yep. And, 
financial pressure, you know, I, I read a study one time that it was about people that were divorcing and the overwhelming majority of them cited financial disagreements mm -hmm. as being the root of their problems in the relationship. And um, it was uh, the only thing that was second place, which was a close second was infidelity. But it was interesting to me that financial disagreements were such a, a big deal. And, and it is because, I mean, they say money can't buy happiness, but being broke can cause a lot of unhappiness. Yeah, we're, we're big Dave Ramsey fans. And mm -hmm. so Dave Ramsey um, is always talks about, you know, getting on the same plate about your finances and choosing a partner who, you know, wasn't going to, every paycheck isn't just going to run out and gamble or <laughs> spend foolishly. Or, Go down yeah. to the stripper bar. Yeah, or whatever. Hang you know, out. You have to be on the same plate with things. One dollar you know. at a time. Same page, you know. So That's probably 20s nowadays. I don't know. I've been but, a long so, time. So, you know, just, um, just things like that, you know, just, just to be mindful. So especially right now with money and finances being uh, on the top of everyone's mind as well, you really should think about coming up with a plan and coming up with a little bit of a budget strat strategy. And Dave Ramsey's a good place to uh, go look for help with that. If you don't have a, an out and you need some assistance, uh, there's Financial Peace University that they do online. Uh, it's We've attended that before and it's really been wonderful for oh, us. That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, DaveRamsey.com. Uh, if anybody here wants the link, we can definitely send it to you. And there's books to read by him, Total Money Makeover. I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan, so as you mm. can tell. Yeah, <laughs> but me too. yeah, so just being on the same page uh, with finances and especially right now with what's going on, uh, you know, cutting things out, looking through your budget, cutting things out and saying, you know, do we really need to pay $150? I'm a big proponent of not having cable. And I've been like that for like 20 years, if not more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so cutting out the cable and just thinking about other methods of enjoyment at home. Um, wink, wink. Yeah. What know? kind of, what kind of home uh, <laughs> Think about other things you, you can about? do. Don't watch TV. <laughs> Quarantine sex is great. Yeah. You don't need a TV. <laughs> you don't need a TV. <laughs> uh, I'm not kidding with that either. So, um, but another thing that you should consider is um, include your children in this too. Don't don't exclude them in the financial plan. Mm. Uh, have them because they may be frightened too and not be telling you um, that they're scared about what's happening in their own life as well. They and know they, more than you think they do. Yeah, they do. Like, you know, you know, out of the, out of the mouths of babes, you've heard that expression many times and they may not even be telling you that they're frightened about, um, as silly as it sounds, what Christmas could look like, or, you know, what my birthday could look like. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a little boy here who turned eight and his parents put on uh, this app called next door and they did a, uh, a front porch uh, thing where they were on the front porch and people drove by and honked their horns and they actually dropped off little gifts to him and stuff. So, cause he couldn't have like his grandparents used to come down from North Carolina. So things are going to be different right now for everything like that where children are concerned so just remember to be mindful of the kids and have discussions with them about you know make it fun how can we you know turn something into a positive here with even the finances mm -hmm. too um, it's a good opportunity to teach because it is you know children are going to face adversity in their life just like we do mm -hmm. and the the earlier we can teach them how to deal with adversity in a positive way and in a constructive way and not freaking out is, is really something that is, I think a super valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another thing is, uh, choosing wise counsel. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, so, you yeah. know, who do you talk to? Yeah, you have to be really careful who you speak with and, and what is going into your brain, also. Like, we don't have, well, as I just told you, we don't have cable TV. So, I don't have that constant Fox or CNN or whatever your choice of mm -hmm. uh, craziness going into our brains every day. Now, that's not to say that I don't hear the news. Um, I do, uh, but it's on um, either my device or uh, on the internet. But it's it's very it's very very free infrequently. Well, let's get back to the the issue about you know where are you getting your advice from? Yeah. Uh, you know the whole idea of wise counsel. Mm -hmm. uh, the last thing you want to do, like if you're having a problem in your relationship, you don't want to talk to your bitter divorced friends. <laughs> about it because what are they going to say true. they've got a negative attitude about relationships to start with yeah. so and, and you have to keep in mind that even though they don't mean it or may not even know it that not everybody wants you to be successful because it oh, it kind of reminds so them of mm -hmm. of the failure that they've had in their life or or the unfortunate circumstances so they'd rather see you have similar circumstances, which makes them feel a little bit normal. It, I mean, it's not something that people deliberately think about, but it's just part of human nature to think that way. So you have to be really careful about who you talk to when you're talking about problems. Like, like for example, if if Pat and I were to have a relationship problem, I, you know, I'm not going to be talking to my friends on Facebook about it. No. I, I'm going to be calling my buddy that's a pastor and and talking to him because i know i can trust his advice i know that he's he's had a successful marriage he knows what relationships are all about he's he's got good information in his brain and he doesn't have any attitudes that are going to seep over and, and give me bad advice yeah i have trusted wise counsel that's a really really mm -hmm. important thing to remember um because if you are in a, a partnership in a relationship and, or a marriage or whatever you're in, you really need to have someone or two people, three people that is in like an inner circle that you know you can go to and that you can trust. Yeah. And trust not to talk about it either. And, you know, also you got to resist the urge because I don't know, it, and I'm sure this is true of everybody, but there's that little urge, you know, when something's making you mad, you want to talk to somebody who's going to be mad about it too. <laughs> you know, there's, that, it, there's always that little urge, you know, because you want to you want to keep it going. You don't want to talk to somebody who's going to give you some, you know, voice of reason. That's you know, true. God forbid you get a voice of reason in your life. <laughs> and, and I then have that, something to say. And that perpetuates the problem. It does. So you got to be really self-aware about that. Yeah. It's it can be an issue. You cause yeah. your own misery sometimes. So you, you kind of want to ask yourself, what does your partnership mean to you? Yeah. What, what does partnership mean? Yeah. What is a partnership? What did you agree to when you became partners? Mm -hmm. uh, now I, I know what I agreed to when I married Pat, I, I agreed to some pretty serious things yep. and the, it's easy to forget. You know, here we are, you know, we've been together for 10 years, been married for seven of them. And, you know, so here we are seven years down the road since I made that agreement. You know, what, you know, what exactly were you agreeing to? And did you mean it? Yeah, uh, you have to think I meant about it, that. Yeah. And I still mean it. And I'm, I'm going to stand by my word on that. And also just this kind of off topic, but, it, you know, this whole situational ethics thing has gotten really popular. I mean, it always has been, but it's even more popular nowadays, it seems, because... Well, I guess it's because I'm getting old. I don't know. <laughs> These kids nowadays, they don't know anything. <laughs> but anyway, the whole idea that, okay, well, you know, I don't have to be a man of my word if somebody else isn't. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, if, if Pat were to wrong me, all of a sudden that gives me a license to go against what I agreed to. And, and it doesn't. I mean, the truth is always the same. And your, your own ethics and behavior and standards do not depend on circumstances. They depend on you. And if, if you agree that, all right, this is some things I agree to, that's that. And it doesn't matter what happens. That doesn't change anything. So I know that's kind of an unpopular view, but that's, 
I mean, that's the way I see it. And, and that's really served me really well. And can I keep going on? You can do it. Now that I'm on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite books, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm. Principle number one, don't condemn, criticize, or complain. The three C's, no condemning, no criticizing, no complaining. Now you probably think to yourself, what I thought when I read it, I thought, Oh, we thought it was going to be, ah, I don't do that. We don't do that. It's so easy. But then once I was aware of it, I was like, I can't go <laughs> five minutes. later, we're walking out. We're yeah. like, Arr. we're criticizing people and <laughs> you know, complaining about awful. things. <laughs> but if, if you can get aware of that and, yeah. and get your three C's under control, your life will be so much better and people will like you so much more if you can quit criticizing, condemning, and complaining. That's true. <laughs> it ain't easy. Even <laughs> while you're under quarantine. So we have some little things that we, um, some solutions or suggestions that we think that you could do. that Served us well. Yeah, little things that you can do to help each other. So um, talk, of course, to each other about any issues or challenges that you're having, but also write. And what I mean by that is um, write little love notes to each other. Makes, I know you're in makes the house it together, real. but it doesn't matter. Um, I say get a chalkboard yeah, or a, a whiteboard or something like that. Yeah, we have uh, two chalkboards actually in our kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we write each other things on there. Just nice little notes. Yeah, just nice little things on there. Being thankful, mm -hmm. you know, I love you. Uh, yeah. Heart, you know, XO, the, you know, all that. Yeah, just <laughs> kind little of things or just cheesy stuff. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really doesn't matter. And I also have this little book of um, little love note things that I leave for him sometimes in his uh, cereal bowl in the morning. So when <laughs> he comes out, he gets a little note in the morning. It's great. But it's really nice. It's just uh, an extra little, uh, I used to live in New Orleans in the French Quarter. It's called a lamb yet. It's just like the little extra thing that you get. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, it just kind of shows you care. Yeah. It, it's a nice, kind, considerate thing to it do is. for another human being. And um, so prior to uh, the quarantine, let's say your guy used to go out with the guys and go have beers at um, the bowling alley or whatever. Or maybe maybe your uh, female partner liked to go out with the girls. Yeah, so girls and guys night out. That's important. Yeah, that's still important. And maybe they want to do that even on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, like the other night, yeah, I was on there talking to some of my guy friends. With some of his guy friends from photography. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually on the call when it started, but then I saw it was only guys, and I'm like, I'm out of here. Yeah, then we only can talk about top secret guy yeah, stuff. Yeah, because then, you know, I just, it was only guys, and I'm like, I'm out of here. Because I just felt like maybe there was, it. you never know if there's just guys, maybe they'll just talk about something that they wouldn't talk about with a woman present mm -hmm. and yeah. that's important for them to do. It's very important. Same thing with uh, women. Um, you have your Thursday morning. I do. I Zoom have my thing where uh, talk to some of your girlfriends and coffee meeting at from like, like minded uh, other yeah. women and from nine 30 to 11. Cause there's certain Thursdays. things yeah. that are unique to being a woman. There's certain things that are unique to being a man. And yeah. Those things are, you know, better to be discussed with people. First of all, people you trust, you know, the whole wise counsel thing mm -hmm. and, and people that are like-minded. And the other thing is um, don't forget, even though you're at home and you're with each other all the time and whether you have children, don't have children, it doesn't matter. Have a date night, make it nice. You know, even though I've been doing cooking and everything, but, um, just make the dinner a little special. Put out candles or yeah, would it kill you to put a candle out? <laughs> yeah, just you know, do something a little special. Um, you know, have a glass of wine or just do something really nice for each other. Oh, I know what some of our friends are thinking. Well, I have kids, I can't do that. Yes, yeah. you can. You put oh, the yes, kids at can. a separate table, have them do like their little separate thing. 
No, have them do their little own set. Yeah, like separate. at Thanksgiving, there's a kid's table and then yeah. there's the adult table. Um, you know, because you're having, hopefully you're having, you know, family dinners now that you maybe didn't have before. Mm. And just say, okay, this is going to be um, mom and dad night. And we're going to have a half hour or 45 minutes or an hour to ourselves. And just have a date night and just, I don't know, just talk about your life and what you're looking forward to later and um or just enjoy just each enjoy other's each company other. just talk about when you started dating or just anything it's just it's just should be a fun conversation don't talk about bills or you know anything like that just have a fun conversation make it lighthearted and just make it fun for each other that's right and limit your exposure to negative things Limit your exposure yeah. to the news media. Limit your exposure to people who have negative ideas and negative opinions and attitudes. Just limit that because that stuff, it, it'll it contaminate your brain. It does. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions, um, we you can, can ask us you anything. You can ask us anything. I, I, I really... And I, and I really mean this. I, I wish that all of my friends had the life I have. <laughs> I, I'm so fortunate. I, you know, I found Pat and, uh, and that she agreed to marry me. And it's just so fortunate. And I wish everybody had what we have. And, and the truth is everybody can. But it, it does take um, putting your pride aside and, and learning how to do it. So what do you think, Pat? I agree. And I, I'm very fortunate myself. Hey, love your partner. Yeah. You're, you're lucky to have each other. You are. Well, I think that's that's all I've got for right now. What that's do you think? That's it. I think we're good. So if you guys have any questions or you want to know more let about us, know. us, just let us know. Yeah. We'll tell you anything. Yeah, that was and good. And we love you guys too. That was good, Pat. That was great. Good work. <laughs> Y'all take care. Thank you for watching. Thanks, guys. Bye.